is an Irish chieftain. The first time I became aware that a song didn't belong to any one person was when I heard Burlive singing, Froggy went to and he did right, ah, uh -huh. I said, Mammy, come up quick. There's a fella on the radio singing your song. <laughs> and it was Burlive singing, Froggy went to Gordon and he did right, ah, uh -huh. ah, uh ah. -huh. As fate would have it, Burr Lives was one of a popular group of folk singers who inhabited New York's Greenwich Village in the 1950s. By the time the Clancy Brothers and Tommy Macon began singing together as a folk group, this gang included the likes of a young Robert Allen Zimmerman, later to be known as Bob Dylan, and the legendary Pete Seeger. And down in Greenwich Village, I was one of 50 or 80 people uh, just being amazed at what the Clancy Brothers and Tommy Maycomb could do. If you were going to make it at all, you had to have conformed to certain things. You had to have a kind of a uniform. My mother had knitted them for us. Your mother did? Because she had been in America when she was 18 and she knew the American winters. So it's totally accidental. Was it? But when Marty saw them, he said, That's it. That's it. This is it. This is it. <laughs> this is the uniform. <laughs> What later became cliché mm. was at the time fresh, honest, uh, new bread from the oven in the morning. You know? yeah. But when the Clancy Brothers came along, and these tunes that we were half ashamed to sing that we learned in school, maybe because it was beaten into us a lot of the time, but they brought this whole new energy to it and made us proud of, of these songs that we'd half forgotten, you know. And I think they did play a huge part in, in, in that way. And now, continuing the Irish theme, Ireland's Clancy Brothers and Tommy make them sing Wild Colonial Boys. So let's have fun. That's the manager said. Be good guys, you know, there's 80 million people listen to you. And, uh, uh. That was a wild 